Hey guys, I uh, want a little math adventure this morning to show why it makes literally no sense to swing down at the ball. Um, so you can kind of see, this is kind of like my whole diagram here. Um, so I got the pitcher's mound on the left. I got home plate on the right. Um, if you look right here, um, we got mound height, 10 inches, average pitcher height, about six feet. Um, these are kind of guesstimates, they don't need to be perfect. Um, the average that your body is kind of like sliding down the mound when you're um, striding out three to four feet. Taller pitchers, obviously, can be further. Um, this is also kind of a guesstimate. Um, but if you're releasing the ball three to four feet from um, the mound, um, your release height, if you're about six feet, your release height is going to be about six feet tall. Also, an approximation can vary per pitcher. The drop of the ball coming to the plate is about four feet because the bottom of the strike zone is about two feet from the ground and the destination of a good pitch is the catcher's glove. You can see that the ball has to travel about 56.5 feet in the horizontal direction to end up in the catcher's glove. But you get the actual path of the ball, if it were going in a straight line, which we know it's not, is about 56.64 feet which when you do the inverse tangent function, it's a little college and high school throwback right there, we're able to find that this angle right here is 4.045 degrees, and that's if the ball were going straight. But based on MLB data, we know that balls are coming down at a 60 degree angle. This number is because of gravity, of course. Um, and curve balls are going to come at a 10 degree angle. So swinging down really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And even though a lot of the arguments that people make for swinging down is that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Therefore, the quickest way to get your bat to the ball is to swing directly down to where you want to make contact. I'm going to show you in just a second why that actually makes no sense at all. So we're looking at two different bat paths here. The first one that I'm going to show you is the kind of old school, um, you know, short to the ball, down to the ball kind of mentality he's going at here. So these are going to be, we're looking at like kind of a little bit, you know, of a middle pitch here. So you'll see, boom, I crossed the line right here. And my bat started like right here. Okay, so if I kind of track that, the bat goes back like this first and then kind of right down to that spot. Now the second swing is going to be the way that I teach. There's going to be quite a few differences and you'll notice that I'm trying to intersect the path of the pitch back here more. So I'm in the way right here. So. The argument for the first swing that everyone makes is that you're short to the ball um, it takes less time to get there, and the distance that your bat actually has to, has to travel is way less because you're being short to the ball. But I'm here to say that you're not actually being short to the ball because our bat starts in about the same spot. I'll change color here. So our bat, bat starts in about the same spot, and it's in the way, like right here. So the path to get there is like this, and the blue line this one is longer than this line. So being short to the ball is not actually short like we think it is or like we've been told for many years. So it, it doesn't make any sense to swing down at all because not only will you not be in the way of the ball for a long period of time, you also will take longer to get to where you can actually hit the ball. So I'm not trying to be short to contact I'm trying to be short to where I could make contact. Now, I may not hit the ball until it's like out in this region, but if I'm late, I can hit it here. And if I'm early, I can hit it here.